话。One of the worst television shows ever created is Provinciano, starring and directed by Coco Martin. It has a convoluted and dragging story and incompetently directed with camera movement that literally hurts the eyes. Characters will just be talking and the camera will jerk around like it is a penis being given a hand job by someone who is being electrocuted. Good thing it ended as it meant that the collective IQ of the Philippines will go up while it is not airing. Alas. Good things do come to an end as the massive ego of Coco Martin and his legion of enablers are back to destroy the Filipino brain cell and profit from our dead and gray matter. This time, it is the old Fernando Po movie, Batang Quiapo, which Coco Martin and his minions have chosen to mangle. We first see Coco Martin as Ramon Montenegro, a gangster who will eventually father the protagonist of the series who will also be played by Coco Martin. We see him parking his car in the middle of Quirino Bridge, which of course is not allowed in real life, so we only see that because Coco Martin wanted to just look cool. The pilot episode starts with a heist involving bank armored cars and the feast of the Nazarene in Quiapo. Right off the bat, the show's complete ignorance and incompetence when it comes to planning a job is shown. For those not familiar, during the Feast of the Nazarene, traffic flow during the event crawls to a halt and roads are closed and you have increased police presence in the area. In order for you to plan a heist involving boxing in a fleet of armored cars, one should have complete control of the streets and you obviously don't get that in an area like Quiapo, what more during an event where people completely take over the streets. You won't be able to drive around the area the way it was shown in the episode even during ordinary days. When the armored cars get boxed in, we see how incompetent Coco Martin is as an action director. We can clearly see that the armored cars are not boxed in. There is a wide space for them to pass through and a Cooper blocking an armored car is just dumb as the car can easily be crushed by the armored car. A Mini Cooper is probably the worst car you can use to block off an armored fleet of cars. Then, during the shootout, we see people just shooting at random directions. Coco Martin then runs through the streets of Quiapo with his white outfit sticking out like a sore thumb in a sea of maroon. Blending with people during a chase is clearly something that the gangster did not plan for. By the way, someone should give Coco Martin a math tutor and teach him to count since his gun seems to have a hundred bullets inside its clip. Yes, we see him reloading but clearly the shots fired do not correspond to the number of bullets that his gun can contain. We're also given a confusing sense of time for the series because the events shown in the first episode is supposed to be from the past since the Coco Martin we saw in the first episode is supposed to be the father of the protagonist but we see vehicles and other items that do not fit the period of the events. Obviously, the makers of the series did not care about historical accuracy and just wanted to show Coco Martin growl and gnash his teeth during the first episode. Talking about accuracy, did the person in charge of casting even care about whether the characters who have multiple actors playing them had people who look alike and had the same height playing them? Clearly, E.G. Falcon and John Estrada who played the same character are poles apart in terms of appearance. It looked like Coco Martin just randomly picked actors without considering accuracy. Now let us get into what I really hated about the episode. When Coco Martin was engaged in a running gun battle and chased through the streets of Quiapo with the police, he decides that it is a good idea to rape a woman right in the middle of the chase. Yes, you heard that right. You have a criminal in the middle of a chase raping a woman. This just strained plausibility and logic too much and made me lose all respect for Coco Martin as a creator. What was just a feeling of irritation as a viewer has turned to utter disgust. Then after raping the woman, he gets shot multiple times, falls from the roof, hitting the concrete street, and gets mauled and hacked by an angry mob. Then just before the episode ends, we see him in jail physically well with barely a scar on his body. 
He must have a healing factor to rival that of Wolverine and Deadpool. The show also has a chaotic editing style reminiscent of the garbage in Ang Provinciano. Again, Coco Martin is trying to simulate excitement in a very contrived manner through abrupt and nonsensical camera movement that only hurts the eyes. His scene transitions look like an experiment being done by someone who recently bought an editing software and wants to try all the transition animations. The first episode represents everything wrong with Philippine showbiz. Every rotten thing is being covered by flash and hype. The show is a slap on the face of art. If Coco Martin argues that his show is going to help hundreds of people so we should support him, then I say, fine. Continue with the show, but don't direct it, don't edit it, don't write it. Just be the lead actor and don't overstep his bounds. He is not director material. The show is simply put a masturbatory effort from Coco Martin and it is best the Filipino audience that cares for its brains step out of the way whenever Coco Martin comes. So that's the review for the first episode of Batang Kiapo from Coco Martin. This has been Kulas for Tambay Reviews. Thank you for watching. Keep on playing.